Hello, my name is Mary Roddy. I'm a radiologist from Charing Cross Hospital in London and also a member of the OSIRIX UK user group. And what I'd like to talk to you about today is different methods that you can use to anonymise cases that you put onto your uh, OSIRIX database for teaching uh, or for examining. Now, it's clearly very important that when you import cases for teaching that there are no patient identifiers either on the image itself or, more importantly, on the DICOM headers that are associated with the patient. And I'm just going to open up my OSIRIX database uh, to show you what I'm talking about. Now, here I have imported into my local default database four patients, and these are real patient images, but the patients' names are fictitious. I've already been into the metadata and altered the uh, patient identifiers for the purpose of this teaching exercise. So if we look at the first case, which is a male patient with a wrist series, the first thing I want to show you is the metadata and the DICOM headers associated with this case. If you go into the top toolbar, you will see something called View Metadata of this image. And if you click on that, you will see a long list of numerical values with an associated DICOM header name and values in the content column. And there are lots and lots and lots of these associated with each patient. Now, the ones that we are most concerned with in anonymization are the numbers beginning with 0010, because these generally relate directly to the patient and include the patient's name, the hospital number, the date of birth, the weight, the address, and the telephone number. And so this is the area that we need to get rid of the information in. But it's important for you to realise that occasionally a hospital, for some reason or another, or a department, will put uh, a value that can identify the patient in one of the other headers. So it's very important to check all these headers when you have finished your anonymization process. So, as I mentioned, there's more than one way to anonymise a patient and I'm just going to go through the ways. One of the ways is to use the anonymization software provided within OSIRIX. Another way is to go into the metadata and simply edit it for each case. Now there is a third way which uses um, a different piece of software and that's called DICOM Cleaner. And DICOM Cleaner uh, will strip every single uh, patient identifier um, out of the metadata list completely. Now, I'm not going to tell you very much more about it because my colleague, Dr. Samir Shamshudin, has already produced an excellent video, video tutorial on how to use this on the OSIRIX user group site and I would recommend that you uh, go and watch that if you want to find out more about that. So I'm going to concentrate today on the two methods within OSIRIX and we'll firstly talk about the anonymization tool. So if we look at this first patient here, if I press anonymize, I'm going to get a list of different default anonymization protocols that I have previously set up and I'll set up, um, I'll select MR Personal Museum here and you can see that what this does is it's selected a different number of DICOM headers which will be stripped if we press the anonymization button and we have the opportunity here as we almost must do when we anonymize a patient we have to give them an alternate number we can do this here. So let's call this patient case 00001. And in the OSIRIX user group, by convention, we always give the patient ID number, uh, make it the same value as the uh, pa 
patient name number. So we're going to call that 0001. And at that point, uh, those will be replaced by the values that we have given and the rest of the information will be stripped out. Now at this point we have a, an option of either adding the anonymized case onto the database in addition to the unanonymized case or completely replacing the original case. I tend to add just in case everything goes wrong and I've still got the original case there. So if we press add you will see that now we have got a second completely anonymized case uh, that goes alongside the case that still has the patient's name. So we can now um, enter the rest of the information that we want to for our teaching collection, the modality and the area, the uh, diagnosis. This is a scaphoid fracture. Uh, we're going to put the age of the patient. He's a 49-year-old male. And then we're going to put the RCR code uh, for the syllabus, which is 2A. And there is our um, anonymized case. So at this point, it's safe to delete the unanonymized case. So that's one way of anonymizing a patient. For the next case, let's look into directly editing the metadata. So I've highlighted the case and I'm now going to open up the metadata list and this time rather than just reading through all the lists I'm going to highlight and activate the editing tool and you can see that this little plus becomes positive and that means I can now edit the DICOM data and I want to do it for the study although I could choose to do it either for a single image or for um, a whole study or for a series or for the patient. But in this case, I'll select study. So if we now look through this list of uh, information, the first thing I see is the hospital name, which I'm going to get rid of, as well as the name of the very expensive surgeon. And this is a physician number, which I'm going to get rid of. And now I'm down to the patient name. Now we're going to call this case 0002. And I will call the ID the same name. I'll get rid of that because it identifies the hospital. And I'll get rid of the patient's date of birth. Um, I'll leave the patient age, which is 20. I'll get rid of the address and I'm now coming out of the 0010 um, numbers so it's less likely that there'll be anything incriminating below this level but I'm just going to look down to check and there doesn't seem to be anything else there. So at this point what I'll do is apply those changes and now I've got um, an anonymized case. It's got rid of the um, patient identifiers and I can now do the same thing. So I'll get x-ray ankle and this is a, a normal anatomy case. And this was, if we remember, a 20-year-old male. And it's always a little bit difficult to know what normal anatomy is in the RCR code, but I'll put 2F for miscellaneous. And there we go. So that's really quite quick and straightforward and easy and has the benefit of us having checked the uh, metadata DICOM header fields as we went along. Now, the final case you can see here has got both a CT of the abdomen and a nuclear medicine scan, so quite a big number of images. So this would be quite a good case to anonymize using metadata. So I'm going to select metadata and I'm going to activate the editing tool. But this time, rather than keep it on study, I'm going to ask for the whole patient to be anonymized. And I'm now going to go down through the headers, 
getting rid of any information that I don't want to be there, like the name of the endocrinologist and the hospital and the address. I've now got the patient name, uh, so I'm going to put case 0003, and the same for the ID number 0003. I'll get rid of the hospital name there, and I'll get rid of the date of birth, and the address, remember this is the 0010 fields which are full of important bits of patient information. And then I'm just going to look through the rest of the DICOM headers in case I can see anything. There's another doctor's name, I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm now happy to put this through. So I'm now going to apply and it's going to take a little bit longer this time because it's not only anonymizing the CT, but it's anonymizing the nuclear medicine scan as well. And there we go. Now we've got both cases anonymized. So we've got the CT and the nuclear medicine scan. And I'm now free to fill these areas in. And I won't do that now in the interests of time. The final thing that I need to mention is that when you're looking at CTs, it's very, very important to check the patient protocol sheets because these very often have the patient's name and can undo all the good work that you've done with anonymization. I've actually deleted the patient name from this uh, protocol sheet. So my advice to you would be that on these large studies, find the patient protocol sheets and delete them so that you're not going to inadvertently um, give uh, patient information away. So there's another one uh, that we need to delete. So there we go. Um, I've shown you um, two ways of anonymizing patients, one using the anonymized tool within Asirix and the other simply editing the DICOM headers. And I've mentioned to you that there is an alternative method using software called DICOM Cleaner that you can learn about in another video tutorial. I hope you've uh, found that helpful and thank you for your attention.